how much house can you afford? This is a question that many potential home buyers, especially first time home buyers, are pondering. In the previous video, I discussed should you buy a house now or should you wait? Well, in this video, we'll show you how to determine how much you can afford and we'll discuss some items that impacts your affordability. Let's get started right now. Good day and welcome to the channel. I am Kathy Tate your licensed realtor here in San Antonio, Texas and surrounding areas. Now, if this is your first time to the channel and you'd like to know everything there is to know about living in San Antonio, subscribe below, tap the notification bell, and you'll be the first to know about the current market here in San Antonio, Texas. As I mentioned, we're discussing affordability. How much house can you afford? Now, for most of us, purchasing a home is the largest purchase that we'll make. So knowing how much we can afford is paramount to buying a home. So first you want to start with examining all of your monthly income and your monthly expenses. So let's take a look at affordability and calculating these numbers. Start with your monthly earnings and include all streams of income, salary, income from alimony if you're getting that, income from investments. Then list your expenses to include all money that goes out monthly. Now here, accuracy is very important because this is a major factor in determining your affordability. And lastly, you want to list the estimated housing cost and down payment. You want to include your homeowner's insurance, property taxes, mortgage insurance, and long terms. Now let's enter these numbers into the calculator to get our affordability. So as you can see from this example, I've entered $75,000 for the annual income, $600 for the monthly expenses. In this example, I did is very low. And then I've entered estimated housing cost percentages, resulting in my calculations. Now let's discuss the 28-36% rule that financial advisors agree that we should use. And that's no more than 28% of your gross monthly income should go towards housing expenses, and no more than 36% should go toward debt. Now this 28 to 36 percent rule is a baseline used to determine what we can afford monthly. So for example, if your gross monthly income is $6,250 a month, according to this rule, your mortgage should be no more than $1,750 and your expenses should be no more than $2,250. And whatever is left over pays for your essentials like food, gas, entertainment, etc. What's important about what you have left over is knowing the difference between what you can spend while still living a comfortable life. Meaning, if you only have five to six hundred dollars left over after paying your expenses, you may be stretching yourself a bit too thin. Because living within your means is the desire so that you can meet other financial goals. Remember, because you are approved for a large loan amount, does not mean you have to spend that amount on a home. Now some things that will impact your affordability. In my last video, should you buy a home now or should you wait? I discussed that interest rates were about 7%, while much higher than the pandemic rates. This is lower than the 8% during the latter part of 2023. The increase in interest rates is an attempt by the Federal Reserve to lower inflation. And it worked, but buyer's demand for housing decreased because of these higher interest rates. And as you know, the higher the interest rate, the higher your monthly payment, which means you may have to get less house to offset the interest rates or bargain with sellers for a good deal to stay within your affordability range for your monthly payments. Credit score impacts affordability as it is a critical step in determining your mortgage interest rates. And as I mentioned previously, a good credit score will position you for a better interest rate and that helps with your affordability. Debt to income ratio impacts your affordability. As lenders look at this to get a better understanding of the risk involved with loaning you money, 
the higher your debt to income ratio, the higher the risk is to loan you money. And this creates doubt from the lender's perspective and your ability to repay the loan. Now, many lenders are willing to go up to 43% as a maximum for debt to income ratio, but some are more stricter. To decrease your debt to income ratio, you can pay off some debt, such as credit cards, student loans, car payments, etc., which would be a wise thing to do before applying for a loan. Now, you may be saying, how do I figure out my debt to income ratio? You can do this by adding up all your monthly debt and dividing this by your gross monthly income. The amount of your down payment plays an important role in home affordability. The more money you put down, the less you will have to borrow. And this reduces the loan to value ratio, which means lower risk from the lender's perspective. And don't forget, if you put less than 20% down, mortgage premium insurance, better known as PMI, will need to be paid. And this can impact your affordability. And lastly, the type of loan impacts your affordability. The VA loan, which is eligible to active duty, veterans and their spouses, qualifies for no down payment mortgage. It has competitive interest rates and no private mortgage insurance. With FHA loans, buyers with a credit score of 500 or higher are eligible for a loan. But if your credit score is less than 580, you will need to put 10% down. If your credit score is 580 or more, your down payment will be 3.5%. USDA loans require no down payment and no limit on the purchase price. USDA loans are geared towards low to moderate income applicants and homes must be in a rural area. So the type of loan you get factors into your affordability and a good lender will be able to share more of the specifics on the different loan types. In this video, we discuss how much house you can afford. We looked at the affordability calculator. We discussed the 28 to 36 percent rule, and we looked at some things that would impact your affordability. It's important to know how much you can comfortably afford before searching for a home. Remember, a good down payment, good credit score, and low debt is the key to how much you can afford. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more information on the different areas of San Antonio. If you're looking to buy or sell a home in San Antonio or surrounding areas, I'd be delighted to assist you. Just give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, all in the description below, and I'm happy to assist you with your home buying and your home selling needs.